at the 22nd of April. Morning, all. Welcome to the um, spring 2022 uh, financial results overview. We're happy to have you here. Um, please, if you have any questions as Laura goes through these numbers, please drop them in the. Are we doing chat or Q and A? Chat. Drop them in the chat, um, and we will be happy to answer those as we go through. So, Laura, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks, Kim. Good morning, everyone. I know you're um, fully engaged into the current school year, but we did want to follow up on our promise to review the results of the uh, spring season. Um, so that's what you're going to see today, as well as um, we're going to share our preliminary results for the, the full year. So uh, the first slide here is spring 2022 review. Um, just a reminder, each sport is listed on the left hand side of the slide and then going across the columns. The first column is attendance and that's total attendance um, at all tournament levels, sectional, district, regional and state are all included in those numbers. Um, same with the ticket revenue includes all levels. Um, other revenue, which is typically um, radio primarily, um, maybe some programs. And um, in the case of, of track and field, um, some entry fees from the middle school track and field. And then total expenses and then profit or loss for each sport. And again, this includes uh, sectional, districts, regional, and state. So baseball um, is the first one there. Attendance was 121,454. Uh, revenue topped a million dollars. Um, ticket revenue and then total expenses of 776 for a profit of 300,000. Uh, next line is softball, 82,646 in attendance, ticket revenue 703, total expenses just under 700,000 um, for a profit of 16,000. Uh, boys tennis, uh, 6,165, ticket revenue 54,000. Total expenses 68,000 for a loss. Um, that is typical of what we see in tennis. It does operate at a loss, um, both boys and the girls tennis. Lacrosse, lacrosse had a phenomenal year. This was our fifth year, I believe, offering lacrosse. Um, attendance was 56,344, uh, very similar to last year. Total ticket revenue was 620,000. Expenses 402. Um, with a profit of 223,574. This was the second year in a row that lacrosse operated at a profit. Um, and then lastly, track and field, 130,188 in attendance, 1.2 million in revenue, expenses 1.079 for a profit of 177. So in total, spring uh, generated 3,653 in ticket revenue, expenses of 3,026 for a profit of 704,000. Um, this was our second highest profit in spring season, last year being the most profitable. Um, it was also our second highest attendance across all spring sports ever in our history, and we set an attendance record at state lacrosse. And it was also the best attendance at state baseball, state softball, and state boys tennis since 2018. Taking a look at the sports by each district. Um, so this would be uh, each district is down the, the left hand col column there um, and Going across, you see baseballs in the first column, then softball, boys tennis, track and field, and lacrosse, which is run at the Alda Regional State Office. So this, um, for the central, east, northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest, would just be sectional and district level events. And then the regional and state, obviously, is the regional and state events for each one of those sports. Um, so in total, we already talked about the sport total. So again, the 
the um, three. This is the profit, by the way. Sorry about that. This is the profit. So baseball made three hundred thousand seven forty four. Softball sixteen thousand eight fifty one. Boys tennis was a loss. Um, so then you can see by district how each one did. So central baseball made a profit of thirty six thousand six eighty nine. Central softball made a profit of 3,104. Central boys tennis lost 4,269. Central track and field made a profit of 9,357. And in total, that district for spring, spring sports, uh, had a profit of 44,881. And so on for the east, the northeast, northwest, and so on. Um, just to point out kind of on the northeast there, um, you see a lot of brackets. Um, that was mainly baseball and softball, some higher expenses um, than they had had in the past. Um, and I think they've made some adjustments for this coming school year um, and, and they should not operate at a loss in those two sports. OK, so moving on from spring to the full year. So again, our fiscal year runs August 1st through July 31st. Um, so our July 31st full year results are posted here under the 2022 column. These have not yet been audited by our CPA firm, um, so they are still somewhat preliminary. The 2021, 2020, and 2019 are also shown for your reference, and those have been audited, so those are final results. Um, so looking at fall sports for 2022, the profit from fall sports was 4,269,473 versus last year of 2,188,236. Obviously, the increase is due to um, the football format as well as Attend full attendance back after COVID. This was the first time for fall that um, all sports were were opened up. Um, so really, the biggest driver in our success um, was the fall sports um, this year. Winter, um, same thing. Winter sports were opened back up for full attendance. Um, we were back at the shop for for wrestling. Um, in Dayton um, for full attendance for state basketball and just all the schools um, hosted basketball, you know, the lower level tournaments for basketball and had full attendance where we did not have that previously in 2021. Um, you'll see looking at the 2019 column under winter sports, we had a profit of 2,438. Um, that was our last full year of um, winter sports um, previous to 2022. So 2022, we made 2,996,131. So an increase over 2019 of about $500,000. Um, and that's very much attendance driven, um, ticket revenue driven. Spring sports, I mentioned, was very successful. Um, we did turn a profit, like I said, our second highest profit um, compared to last year. Um, and then total tournament net profits, that's the first bolded line there, 7,968,594, just under 8 million coming directly from the tournaments. Again, if you skip over a few columns to the right versus 2019 of 4,110,445. A lot of that increase of about four million there is driven from the change in the football format as well as renegotiating contracts and at our state level and other um, tournaments to bring down our expenses as well as um, the ticket prices was up about two dollars from 2019. Other operating revenues, which is um, corporate, primarily corporate sponsorships, officials, licensing permits, um, and media rights, uh, 3750 
very consistent across the years. Um, and then other operating expenses are all other expenses um, not directly related to running a tournament. Those other operating expenses were six million one fifty nine. And again, I want to point out the 2019 column where other operating expenses were seven million nine sixty three, so almost eight million dollars versus where we were in 2022, um, fully staffed all in and everything. And it was six million one fifty nine, so a savings of almost two million dollars in a four year um, time period. Um, so really kudos to Doug and the board for um, making some good decisions around our expense structure. Um, operating profit, five million five fifty nine. Um, you know that was beat our budget, um, which we'll sh see on the next slide by about three million dollars. Um, and we're going to be reinvesting some of that money into the organization. Extraordinary items. Um, typically, that's um, just some things that are outside the normal um, course of operations. The big number there is under the 2021 column that had to do with the um, um, ERSSA grant, yeah. as well as um, some COVID relief on payroll taxes that we received um, from, from the federal government that any business um, could apply for. And then that just total profit after those extraordinary items. I know we've covered a lot of numbers. Um, so just to kind of boil it down, um, these are our OHSAA financial objectives. Number one, operate at a profit. Number two, build reserves, meaning build a rainy day fund. Um, that's not it, you know, because we had been running deficits previously that um, we have been drawing on cash as, a, as opposed to building on cash. So that's one of our objectives. And then support opportunities for student participation. So um, operate at a profit. Our budget was $2.2 million to be profitable, and we achieved 5.5 million. Building reserves. Our goal is to be at nine months cash on hand. We're at 7.4 months when we look at our ongoing operating cash. So checkings and savings, we're at 7.4. We have built up reserves of another 2.3 months um, of, uh, of cash on hand. So in total, we're, we're at 9.7. So we have achieved this goal of nine months cash on hand. And that's a benchmark and measuring stick that we um, report to our board uh, every month and something we want to maintain. We really want to start building this reserves so that, you know, if there is another catastrophe in the future, we have some money to lean on. And then support opportunities for student participation. We added two new sports. And we also awarded 159 scholarships to students in Ohio this year. So we added girls wrestling and boys volleyball, um, which are sports for this year. And then um, in the month of July, June and July, we awarded $159,000 worth of scholarships to um, students in Ohio. So we talked about that $5 million, um, 5.5 that we made. What are we doing to reinvest that into o OHSAA? Well, for the current school year, so um, the year that we are in, compared to last year, we lowered ticket prices for 35 to 40% of purchasers um, last year. We eliminated the game day purchase surcharge so how it worked last year, if you bought in advance, your ticket was, um, let's say, eight, uh, I believe it was $8 at the sectional and district level. If you waited until, if the fan waited until uh, just a few hours before gates opened, it was $10. Um, we have eliminated that. The, the um, price for sectional and district this year is $8 across the board, re regardless of, um, 
when you purchase and it'll be $10 for regional sports. Um, we've also created a student ticket price for fall. Um, we're seeing how that goes um, and that'll be a uh, sectional district and regional um, events. Um, we already had some student ticket pricing for state events and that continues. Um, so the student ticket price will be $2 lower than the, um, the, the public or the, the adult price. So $6 for sectional and district and $8 for regional, which will be um, available for students. And then we continue to negotiate with Stripe for lower transactional fees. Um, you know, it, it may only be, you know, a few pennies, uh, 10 cents, let's say, per ticket, but it is is lower. Um, we're working to do that. We, the membership dues um, are still $50 per sport. Those dues will be billed uh, towards the end of this year, probably in late November, early December. Um, we provide, we're providing, we stipends to schools to help offset travel expenses for select tournament events. So um, for example, regional and state, if the team in volleyball advances, you'll receive a stipend to help offset travel expenses. Um, the exact model has not been um, approved yet, but uh, there are funds in our budget to do this and we, we will do some form of this. Um, we added the two new sports, girls wrestling and boys volleyball. Obviously we have good um, structure in place, taking those on from the prior associations, um, but you know we will have to invest some dollars into those, um, ramping up those new sports and um, getting them up and going. And then talked about continuing to build reserves. We're currently at two months. We'd like to get those somewhere between six and 12 months, but that's gonna take time. Um, so, you know, that's a goal for over the next three to five years is to continue to build those reserves so that we can ensure that um, we're here for the, for the long haul. Questions? We do not have it. But we will give it a second to allow something to come in. Okay, um, just a reminder, if you uh, do have questions um, at any time about our finances, you can always reach out to me, Laura Vermilia. My information is on our website, um, lvermilia at ohsaa.org or um, Dr. Keel, Kim Keel, or of course our executive director, Doug Yu. We are all available um, to answer any of your questions um, as they come up. 